Hi, this is Greg Smalley with Pod 366, a weird movies podcast for 366 Weird Movies. And I'm joined here as I was before by Giles Edwards, my co-host. Say hello, Giles. Hello. And today we have a special guest, Joe Badon. <laughs> hello, hello. French pronunciation. <laughs> the uh, director and artist, uh, director of two feature films, uh, The God in My Ear and uh, Sister Tempest, and yeah, yeah. also an artist who has incidentally designed our logo that we use on the website. So, yeah, yeah. I am honored to be here. Love you guys. Big friend, big supporter. Yes, yeah, Giles. Nice to see you. We we met uh, in uh, Fantasia Fest. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember we uh, crashed into each other. Yeah, I think made vague plans to do so again, and then uh, time went away. Oh yeah, like I was there one day. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. My short film Blood of the Dinosaurs was playing there, like literally one day, and I was just like glad I got to run into you. Oh, thank you. Likewise. We're going to talk about uh, Blood of the Dinosaurs and the uh, Wheel of Time uh, at the end, hopefully. Sure. Um, we want to do what we always do, which is run down the uh, news of the week. And last week, I started the uh, conversation by saying January, nothing's going on. Everybody's mm -hmm. waiting for Sundance. And then guess what happens? We get hit with a ton of uh, movie news this week that we would like to talk about. So we're going to go through it pretty quickly. Oh, um, I heard you throw down the gauntlet there. So they wanted to show you who was boss. <laughs> yeah. Well, first, I guess, uh, since it's, uh, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on this, um, but Francis Ford Coppola at 83 is making a movie, spending uh $120 million of his own money. He's like sold his wife, mortgaged his winery to, to finance it. It's a, some kind of science fiction utopian movie about uh, New York. There aren't many details on the plot, but apparently it is in huge trouble. And he has like fired half the art team uh, as they're in the middle of a 90 day shoot. Oh, and God. I think the rest of them resigned. And this isn't that unusual for him because, you know, this sort of happened on Apocalypse Now. Uh, but do you guys have any thought on that? We don't know if it's going to be a weird movie. It sounds like it might be, though. I'm, it's discouraging that as a director, <laughs> me as a director, with never getting gaining access to money, thinking <laughs> that Francis Ford Coppola can't find funding. I should just give up now. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, you know how to do it cheap. <laughs> no, you got to stake your claim with a snappy Vietnam story, Joe, and then, <laughs> then you can sit back and watch the awards pour in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I read, uh, you sent an article, Greg, and I, I read that and I was like, oh, okay. So I don't know, it seems to be a habit with him, but also he seems to have landed on his feet each time. So my guess is presuming good health. He'll he'll get through this and have his movie and then have the really compelling documentary as well. Yeah, yeah. the, the sure. documentary might be uh, more. It might be a uh, you know uh, Terry Gilliam Don Quixote thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anything, it just creates more buzz for the film. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and the next big news, I think, is that a screener dropped. Uh, or a screener trailer dropped that had the internet buzzing because it's for Ari Oster's new film. And I can't share screeners here, but they will be on the website. I can share screeners, but they're just so choppy that you can't uh, pay any attention to them. It'll be on the website. Um, but can you guys see the picture? Oh, the bow is afraid. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I just watched the trailer. That. Yeah, um, I my my editor sent me that trailer, and I still haven't watched it yet. But I heard, I mean, I, I've heard good news about it, good buzz about it. But yeah, I still haven't watched anything for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm intrigued because uh, I will admit I haven't seen Hereditary yet, but I've seen Midsummer and. Bo is Afraid seems to be peopled entirely by interesting characters, whereas Midsummer had no interesting characters. So I think that's going to be a nice uh, change up, at least from my perspective. Hereditary had a better better character, uh, uh, was more character driven. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Midsummer, the characters were strange. They, I just didn't feel for any of them. Yeah. Yeah. 
and um, also with the trailer anything that uses uh, one of super tramp's best song as the uh menacing theme goodbye stranger well that's uh a promising sign Goodbye, in my stranger. Book. it's been Good nice time. i was going to mention that the uh he uses that really well the other thing is that this uh movie appears to be uh a comedy for uh most part uh, <laughs> it's unusual for him yeah just um, looking at the stills it definitely looks like a different vibe for him yeah so let's see the next one and maybe i can share the picture for this is that I wanted to talk about is uh, a haunted Turkish bathhouse, <laughs> which that is, looks uh, incredible. I am so <laughs> excited about that film. I watched the trailer like three times last oh, night. I was going to say, did you see uh, what I saw was a clip rather than a trailer? Uh, but oh yeah, I saw the what is it at uh, Mondo Mondo oh, Macabro? Yeah, their 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 trailer for it. It was really really wonderful. Uh, they do amazing work, uh, Mondo Macabro. Um, they find a bunch of stuff that uh, is just totally forgotten from around the world. <laughs> um, the uh, description to this one reads, the film is a bizarre mixture of Japanese erotica, gang erotica gangster film, and ghost, caught, ghost cat horror movie, which is a subgenre of Japanese horror movie. All popular genres in the 60s and 70s. It's a heady cocktail makes for an entertaining and unpredictable film that rocks along at a giddy pace. And, and so Ghost Cat. I mean, you had me a Ghost Cat, right? Yeah. I mean, that's all you really need to say. <laughs> I see it as Yakuza Ghost Revenge Cat. Softcore. Softcore. Yeah. So um, that yeah, one should be pretty wild, as you guys can probably tell by the still. It's got, you know, very theatrical look. Um, so then on to movies that are in theaters, uh, there's four small new releases this week, uh, all, all limited, probably not at theaters near you, but all of at least some interest to us. Uh, the first one, which I just put up on the screen, can you see that one? Mm -hmm. Beautiful Beings, it's an Icelandic, uh, movie, it's from Altered Innocence, who are... Uh, technically supposed to be uh, LGBTQ uh, uh, based producers, but yeah, almost everything they, stuff. yeah, almost everything they release is weird or surreal, and sometimes the LGBTQ uh, connection is very very slender. Yeah. Um, but the the synopsis for this one reads. Adi, a boy raised by a clairvoyant mother, decides to adopt a bullied misfit into his gang of outsiders. Left to their own devices, the boys explore aggression and violence, but also learn about loyalty and love. As the group's behavior escalates towards life-threatening situations, Adi begins to experience a series of dreamlike visions. Can his newfound intuition guide him and his friends back to a safer path? Or will they dive irrevocably into future violence? I will say I'm going to actually watch this one tonight. I have a screener for it, so I'll be able to report pretty soon. But it's, you know, two hours. Looks like it's going to be slow paced. Mm. Uh, cinematography probably based in uh, movie. Icelandic cinema is kind of having a moment, I guess, right now with uh, Lamb. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. I, I believe some other movies have been shot utilizing the taking advantage of the landscape there did, did you guys have any thoughts on this one in particular uh yeah just watch the trailer for this uh, definitely looks like it'll tick all the art house boxes whether or not it ticks any weird ones uh i'll keep my fingers crossed for you yeah and it could land into the too too heartwarming vibe <laughs> you know yeah. so that's always like a, a trapping for these kind of films be interesting well, to see what they do. We shall see. There's a lot of talk of violence and a lot of talk of uh, uh, dreamlike imagery. So we're going to see for that one. But we'll go on. Let's move on to the next next one. Okay. This mm -hmm. does not have a poster. Uh, it's called Jethika, which is obviously a mispronunciation of Jessica. It's uh, an indie. And let me read you the description. 
Hiding out in New Mexico after a freak accident, Elena runs into, into Jessica, an old friend from high school. When Jessica's stalker suddenly shows up at their door, they must seek help from beyond the grave to get rid of him for good. And I will tell you, if you watch the trailer, it's not spoiling anything to say that uh, Jessica's stalker is uh, not alive anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, like, these guys, it's hard to be a director and try to comment on these kind of things. <laughs> but uh, I was, I'm just not my bag. It's not my bag. That's all I could probably should say to that. <laughs> Yeah, looked uh, trailer set uh, trailer looked pretty mumblecore, and yeah. I was somewhat troubled by the quote from Ebert.com: "The best kind of weird," because not only does that presume that Ebert.com people know what the best kind of weird is, <laughs> presuming there even is one, it just means that or suggests to me that this will be a quirky mumblecore. Well, and being like kind of part of the like the the micro budget, no budget crowd i see a lot of these like no budge movies like you know like that that company whatever that website that puts out these like no budget films and this just feels like there's a lot of things that feel just like this it it's it's been done well you know? the main reason i picked it actually is because of the uh the best kind of weird quote and i'm glad giles brought that up because i was going to say that the the best kind of weird to Roger to Roger Ebert.com is probably, you know, very, very mildly weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but we will, um, you know, the reviews have generally been good. So I'm going to keep an eye out for that one. Uh, the next one is probably even a bit rarer. Seven Faces of Jane. Um, this one is a an, ex, an exquisite corpse thing where uh, seven different directors, or maybe eight, were given uh, just directions to write a road trip uh, movie for this one actress. She directs uh, one of her own segments. Um, and so anytime it's an exquisite corpse where you have different directors working and not knowing what the other one's doing, Right. Um, are interested in checking out what happens now they rarely are overall successful i'd say but there there's usually something interesting and there was a clip uh in there where uh jane fights her own gets in a cat fight with her own dop doppelganger which i thought was uh an entertaining scene but yeah that was that was cute and uh yes with the menacing british gangster looming in the background at the diner while that's going on so that minute and a half looked uh interesting at least yeah i don't know that actress like i'm always like interested if she ever, ever in something because like like i'm mildly entertained when when i see her so i'm like you know i might just check it out just if it's like on netflix or something i might be like all right yeah i'll check it out you know it's one of those situations <laughs> Jillian Jacobs is her name, and uh, some of the directors I haven't heard of, but uh, Zan Cassavetes I've heard of, and Gia Coppola, again, back to the uh, Francis Ford Coppola collection, connection, uh, his granddaughter directed a segment. Would you ever direct a uh, an exquisite corpse type uh, experiment, Joe? If people give me enough money, I'll do almost <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does go. the form does the format interest you? Yeah, absolutely, totally. Um, but I'm so, I feel like I would troll if they would give me enough, like creative control. I would probably just troll the whole situation. You know, like make it completely just like one shot of just somebody sit like sitting on a chair and not doing it. <laughs> just something that would just fuck the whole movie. Just <laughs> it's just like '90s, like. Uh, it, it you know me being a um, generation X, it's like a whole generation of trolls. So it's just something we have in our blood. So I'm yeah, where that all started. That. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I said I was wondering where that all started. <laughs> yes, <laughs> started with Generation X. So we are going through these in timely uh, fashion, which I'm happy about. I was afraid we were going to 
run out of a little bit of time to talk to Joe at the end, but uh, there's one more coming up. This is Skinamarink, which uh, if you've seen the trailer, I'm I'm from what I've been reading, the whole movie is is pretty much like this. Oh wow! It's just two kids in an empty house. Their parents have disappeared, and there's spooky noises and talk for like 90 minutes and it's just all atmosphere um almost no plot it sounds like but uh people seem to be really digging the vibe it's a uh obviously it's going to be a super low budget uh, movie ifc midnight's putting it out uh, for some reason i thought it was going to be on shutter but uh maybe not uh did you guys happen to catch the trailer for this one yeah uh and i thought it said it toward the beginning or printed on the screen shutter but uh with you saying that i can't be too sure i like the atmosphere i like the the trailer was rather interesting in that there was only one line almost only one line spoken over the you know uh blurry and moody imagery so uh i i could see this possibly being very quietly upsetting with a sort of long lingering effects on the viewer afterwards but um yeah i i i've talked to the director a couple of times like on instagram or whatever really i'm super nice you know super cool and the the film itself honestly looks like that's what i'm talking about like that's the kind of like future of film that i'm talking about like being like that's this ballsy shit Whatever that is, even if it's even if it's terrible, it's fucking <laughs> ballsy shit. I have no idea how it's gonna be. You know what I mean? Like, but hats off to him for doing something completely different. I I want to see it just for that. I have no idea how it's gonna be, but I love that that it's just dismantling movies like that and doing something totally different that might everyone might hate. That's mm -hmm. that's fantastic. <laughs> seems, seems like the critics are really got a good, very good review and variety. So people are liking it. But Joe, it's almost the opposite of what you do because it's it's super minimalist where you try, yeah. like, you're maximalist. Yeah. Say. And that's just because I'm, I'm trying to lean into my own personality, you know, and not trying, trying to just be honest to who I am in my core. But I I like I love so much minimalism stuff. I just I wish I could do it, but I can't. My brain just, <laughs> my brain just doesn't work that way, you know. So when I see something like that, I'm just like fascinated. Like skin of a rink, yeah, I'm fascinated by it. Like just to have the ability to think minimally like that is amazing. And to keep an audience's attention. Yeah, like masking masking threshold. You know, like that film. I like the masking threshold, yeah. Fucking brilliant for just like giving yourself that small of boundaries and then working inside those boundaries. I love it. It's incredible. I can't do it. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about uh since we did get through the uh uh new releases in a timely fashion, let's talk about what you do do, Joe. And actually, uh let let me make a reminder to try to get that see if we can get that skin rink guy uh what's his name <laughs> we'll try to get him on as a guest you should he's super cool i don't remember his name oh uh, yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll find that, him on instagram i think he can imdb works so. though oh oh yeah <laughs> that's that's still around yeah <laughs> but but let's talk about what you do do joe um first your mm -hmm. latest I want to talk about what, what you're up to now, but your latest two projects were uh, Blood of the Dinosaurs yeah. and The Wheel of Time. Wheel and of Heaven. They, we, that, I'm sorry, did I mispronounce it? A oh, Wheel of Heaven. Heaven. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Wheel of Time is that a Amazon thing, which I don't even know what it is. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, it's fine. Oh, yeah. But uh, they are related somehow. Yes. Um, yeah, but Blood, Blood of the Dinosaurs. I kind of like whenever I'm writing, I kind of think of a layout of films like books, just like in chapters and prologues and epilogues and shit. And so Blood of the Dinosaurs is just a little prologue uh, 
a two wheel of heaven. But with Blood of the Dinosaurs, it's more of like an essay on, uh, you know, birth and rebirth and the the cycle of nature and the cycle of of the world and how it starts with, you know, one you know one society grows like dinosaurs and then they're wiped out and extinct and then we grow up and then we will be wiped out and extinct and another civilization will be on top of us. So it's kind of a, a an essay about that in a children's show, and. Mm -hmm. um, and then that is kind of the theme to what the story is with Wheel of Heaven. With, with Wheel of Heaven, it's a meditation on birth and rebirth again, but it's really the, the, uh, the theme is for the predatory nature of men against women. And, uh, and, and in my own self, just dealing with my own misogyny and trying to like essentially burn it out of my life, you know? And and be a better husband and a better father and all those good things. So um, that's kind of what we what Blood of the Dinosaurs and Wheel of Heaven is about philosophically. Um, but what Wheel of Heaven is about narratively, it's um, well. First, I'll tell you about Blood of the Dinosaurs real quick. Blood of the Dinosaurs is this little children's show where Uncle Babo teaches uh, children about where oil comes from, which is from the Blood of the Dinosaurs. And he has this helper named Purity, who's just this little girl who kind of like helps, you know, is like the sidekick for Uncle Babo. And then Wheel of Heaven, we follow Purity as, as a, an adult. And she has like left the film world because of all the... Um, the um, abuse that she's had at the hands of people like Uncle Babo and directors and, you know, just Hollywood in general, who's just spit her out, you know. And so now she's just a simple mechanic and she just lives her life simply in like Midwestern town or whatever, you know. And um, and so then she goes to a thrift store, picks up a choose your own adventure novel named, uh, called The Wheel of Heaven. And she starts reading that and she then puts herself into that novel. So then we watch uh, the, the character purity that's in the novel um, as she like breaks down on the side of the road and she has to make all these decisions on how to like get, get her car fixed. And she runs into this party that's in the woods by the broken down car. So it's kind of like um, Rocky Horror Picture Show kind of thing. And so that's the story inside the book that Marge Mechanic's reading. And then we're also watching a, a spaceship UFO <laughs> uh, spy on everything that's happening. And that's also played by the same actress. Uh, and that's Captain Korn in her spaceship as she tries to find the center of the universe. So all that's happening at the same time uh, Margaret, the artist, who's this autistic artist, is is telling the story of all these things that she just created. It's just art pieces that she's just kind of telling the audience about. And then we're also watching us shoot the film uh, on top of all that. And so we're watching the actress, you know, get ready for the film and learn her lines and talk to me. And I yell cut and we're just like behind the scenes. So watching all these layers all happen at the same time. But they're all just following the themes of of predator of the predatory nature uh, of just humanity against each other and how this one person who's playing all these multiple roles are all trying to break out of of being preyed upon so that's the idea it's a lot and it's all kind of compacted into essentially a five-part miniseries which starts with the blood of the dinosaurs as a prologue and then four chapters of wheel of heaven so, so, yeah, that's what I was going to ask is you describe all this plot. And I'm thinking, isn't it like 20 minutes long? Or, or no, something? well, every episode is about 20 minutes long. And so okay. it ends up being about 100 minutes total. Is so, that including Blood of the Dinosaurs? Correct. Yes, exactly. So it's an 80 minute short. It's four episodes that are 80 minutes of the Wheel of Heaven. And then you have the prologue that's 20 minutes of Blood of the Dinosaurs. Um, and so, and, and I'm still, we're editing the film, we're at chapter three, we're halfway through chapter three, 
right now. And it's interesting because we're adding in all this behind the scenes right now. So it's all this unscripted behind the scenes that we're then creating a narrative out of uh, through uh, some some um, some fake behind the scenes that we're reshooting. And then also some like overdubbed kind of director commentary that I'm then putting in here and there throughout the film as well. So I'm really trying to break down cinema completely and create like a like a meta story inside of a meta story inside of a meta story, essentially. <laughs> and how what is is it all going to be released together? Is it going to be yes. in installments? I'm going to release it all together. I was originally going to re release it in installments, but I realized how completely nonsense that seems. Uh, the Each episode kind of is, we're just giving you enough information for the next episode. So nothing feels like complete. Even Blood of the Dinosaurs kind of just ends and like there's going to be more, but it still kind of leaves you hanging. So I decided we're we're going to be finished like in about two months with the whole thing. So we're just going to release the whole thing through the film festivals with Blood of the Dinosaurs attached as one big, uh, you know, mini series collection that will will uh, tour through the festivals. And then we'll, we're looking for a distributor, you know, right now. So we'll see if we can find one. If not. I'll have to figure that out when I get there. <laughs> so, so did yeah. you uh, did you do the funding uh, for you did the funding for Blood of the Dinosaurs first, right? And then did you do the I so my all? cinematographer paid for B Blood of the Dinosaurs essentially, uh, which wasn't much. It was like twenty five hundred dollars. So it was just a little like, hey, let's make something. Um, like with with with, with God inside my ear, the first feature. I basically took eight thousand dollars of my savings and just made the film. Uh, so the so we know how to work on like tiny budgets. So we made Blood of the Dinosaurs and used that to then get uh, as like, hey, look, we made this thing. We'd like to finish it, and so then we did use that as a as a vehicle for our Kickstarter, uh, and then we raised twenty thousand, I think, or I think it was twenty thousand for the Kickstarter for the rest of it. For the mini series, so. yeah, that doesn't surprise me because uh, I remember at the Fantasia Film Festival where Blood of the Dinosaurs uh, was in the cavalcade of perversions showcase in the a lewdly religious glare uh, right. subcategory, <laughs> and uh, I do remember enjoying it myself, and that it went over very well, certainly yeah. with that particular kind of crowd who would yeah. attend a uh, compilation of shorts with that theme. Yeah, it's had my best reception has been Blow the Dinosaurs out of all my films. I think doing it in a short form helps people digest it maybe a little better. <laughs> so, Well, then when it's, uh, it's, it's, even though you're terming it a mini series, if it's released all at once and watched right. all at once, it's essentially going to be a feature. That yes. Yeah, I'm actually considering releasing it when I release it through the festivals. Uh, just getting my, I mean, I have a lot of filmmaker friends that have made like silly little commercials and stuff. So I might actually like intercut every episode with a couple of just silly commercials and then kind of cut back to create, because it, it, in the, when you watch it, we do cut to commercials in, through, throughout the episodes. And we, it is kind of a show within a fake TV channel. And so we've already kind of created that atmosphere. So it wouldn't be hard to kind of just make it into like a fake mini series within a fake cable channel that you're watching, uh, which I'm already thinking about doing. So because we have we do have a, um, a clip that we shared. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have one or two. I have two clips on my YouTube page that uh, including the trailer for the film. But I have a clip for chapter one and a clip for chapter two. We're, we're, every time we finish editing a, a chapter, we're releasing a clip from that chapter. So the clip I'm thinking of uh, involves like a UFO cult type. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a fake. It's a commercial for a fake cult called the. Uh, I can't even remember. Cosmic Hour of Healing Power is the name of the show, and so we actually are pitching that 
as a TV series to some channels right now. So we're going to see if we can make that into a regular TV series, which would be a lot of fun. Yeah. So that's good. And so you're just you're almost you're almost still uh, writing it as you're editing the footage you have, huh? Yeah, with the behind the scenes that we're edit we're in we're incorporating into the film, we're kind of like changing the narrative here and there slightly, which is interesting to keep. We've basically continued writing the film even through production, uh, as almost like jazz writing, you know, or improv writing. Or the development of epics over the years as they're told over and over again with the nuance or yes. if you want to get it even more religious, the various commentaries on the Talmud that go three, four, five, six deep. Yes, totally. And it's interesting because it makes the story feel more natural if you're continually like fixing it throughout. And I've no and I've noticed now watching like stuff like Paul Thomas Anderson and shit. Like you can tell he is like tweaking every time he gets on set because it feels like jazz, you know? And that's just wonderful. I love that, so. And so what's, um, I guess that's, do you have a, a plan for something after uh, The Wheel of Heaven or? I do, I have two uh, feature films that I'm pitching right now. Uh, one that I've finished the script for, it's 300 pages right now, so I have to slice a bunch. But it is basically like an action holiday film that kind of mixes like Hallmark movies with psychedelic action films and kind of putting this together. Uh, the title alone it will blow your mind, but I'm just, I, everything's kind of under lock and key. But, and then the other film is like a non-sploitation that, that would be done on stage, uh, will be filmed live, but then also filmed cinematically and then intercut together. So those are the two uh, features that I'm I'm working on right now, but 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 really concentrating on finishing Wheel of Heaven because I want to get that baby out. I'm very excited about it. So, would you ever consider writing a script for someone else to direct, or or when you write it, do you have to have complete control over it? Um, I, it's really just a matter of money. Like if people somebody wants to pay me enough, fucking yes. If not, I. I do a really, I have a really comfortable job basically selling my art, my original artwork on the side of the street uh, in New Orleans. It's very stupid, but I, I make, I make decent money at it and it's very easy. So that if anything- doesn't sound stupid then. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah, I will do any of that shit for if people pay me enough. Absolutely. <laughs> Let me see. What's this? Uh, a surprise. Oh yeah, that's one of my pieces right there. That's a mm. lot of pieces. I grabbed something off the uh, off your Facebook page to yeah illustrate uh, because uh, I don't know how you have so much time to do all this and direct uh, and paint. Yeah, it's I think too. it's an overactive brain. It's definitely mental problems. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm guessing about four hours of sleep a night for you. For you. <laughs> it's not. It's not much half the time. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to learn how to pace myself because I definitely like overdo and like create chaos all in my life. So kind of like that painting right there. So I think the painting works very well. It's a collage style and that, you know, a painting you can, you can go your own way. You can look over to the right at the pyramids. You can look to the upper right, you know? Yeah. So, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do in my film work. Like, this is kind of what I'm trying to capture. Like a montage collage of many styles and ideas that could all kind of work together, but loosely work together, you know? So. Okay. Well, um, what's your, uh, where can people, where do you recommend people go to find what's going with? Oh, your, well, your I have my movie production site it's cosmicfamilyfilms.com i also have my own film site jobadon.com uh but then you can also check out my artwork uh, jobadon.blogspot.com still have that for my my art blog but you know if you if you search for me on facebook or instagram jobadon i'm there and like i update my shit at those two places more than anything so don't suppose uh, you have a Twitter account? 
I do, I do have a Twitter account as well. I think you just search Joe Badon, but it's really funny because people in Twitter, people are always mistyping my name for Joe Biden. <laughs> it's great. I like literally have a great screenshot of saying how I sniffed and molest children or something. It was like, it was hilarious. Oh my gosh. So yeah, they, uh, they had Joe Biden and me uh, share a lot in common, I guess, whatever. <laughs> I, I was going to point out that also that uh, a lot of leads that we've had on movies have actually come from Joe sharing trailers on Facebook uh, for things I'd never heard of. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I I am just one of those people that dig and dig and dig. I think we probably all do that, right? It's just like trying to find like the next weird thing or interesting you know cinema that you just have i just i'm always trying to find something i've never seen before it's like a weird obsession you know i think that's why we all like weird films though you know good point and uh we are getting a little little low on time so joe we like yes. the only thing we like to ask people for a hometown restaurant recommendation now you're from new orleans there is no really good restaurants there <laughs> there there's no place to eat at all uh, not much of a party town either yeah. <laughs> but what would you recommend if somebody finds themselves stuck there i always tell people this because uh there's this thing called the chantilly lace cake that's come out of new orleans and it's more of a i think just a new orleans thing but i think more people should eat it and there's this there's this bakery called the Bywater Bakery in New Orleans. Go there. That's where they started the Chantilly Lace Cake. Get a piece of Chantilly Lace Cake. It's like, it's kind of like a mixture of wedding cake, but stuffed with fresh fruit, fruit. And it's just incredible. So there you go. Well, that sounds great. Fantastic. And we do. Uh, so I think, uh, I think that about covers it. Thank you, Joe, for coming. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. This I'm honored to be a part of this. You guys are like one of the only websites outside of social media that I actually go to. So no, there you go. Uh, <laughs> all right. I love well, you. Thank you. And yeah. uh we're gonna post this. We're recording this on Thursday. We're gonna post it on Friday. So tune in when we post it. Uh if you're on the website, you'll be able to see a bunch of trailers and links. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you won't, or if you just listen to it on SoundCloud, you won't. And uh, this is only our second episode, and we're hoping to get a little, uh, get it rolling a little. And Joe was very helpful to be our first guest, and so got to thank you again. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Joe. It's great All chatting right. again. Appreciate Thanks, it. guys. Uh, Till next week. Bye bye. <laughs>